This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today we're going to revisit yet another older video that I recorded um, and try to follow a little bit of a different approach uh, based on one of the questions from one of my viewers. So the original video was focused on pulling a PDF file down, downloading it, and then parsing the PDF file and reading it into uh, pandas and then making some uh, analyses on it. And so here's the original code that we had used. Now the question that the user had was, is there a, an ability to access that PDF file without having to download it first, but instead just directly access it? So we're gonna try to do that today. So we're gonna try to read it into memory. So I asked ChatGPT for a little bit of help here, and ChatGPT was able to give me uh, some code that uses the bytes IO which allows you to uh, create a bytes version of the content from the page and it'll give us the PDF file in bytes. Now I don't know how that's going to end up working out but let's see if it works. So let's go ahead and grab this code and then I'll modify it as needed. So here we are. I already have the URL so I'm going to change this to say PDF URL. Uh, I don't need this because I have requests down here and I don't think I, okay, I did need to install PDF Plumber, so that's good. So we've got the PDF URL, let's delete this PDF URL and let's go ahead and uh, we're not going to want to read through all the PDF pages. Let's just break after the first PDF page and we'll see if that works. So if it works, we should be able to see, so we're gonna eventually get to page 17, but we should be able to see, you know, at least the text accounts payable report pack. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. So it's probably importing. It is, oh cool. Hey, <laughs> perfect, that worked. So let's see if we can grab uh, page 17. I think if we do, uh, let's see, page, let's call it, I think it's like vendors. So if we go to page 17, okay, vendor list, vend list equals pf.pages, it's probably going to be 16, and then text equals then list dot extract text print text and I'm just gonna comment that out and let's see if this works awesome this looks like we are cooking with gas here let's just make sure I'm dealing with the same data that I expect to so accounts payable report pack invoice by vendor list and if I look at my original code uh, oh, looks a little different. So we're actually dealing with changes will be reflected under the new heading. So I might be using a different page here. Changes. Will be reflected under the new heading. Hmm, weird. You know what? That's okay. We're still going to go with this page 17, even if it's a little bit different than what we did last time. I don't really care. So page 17 it is. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to turn this into a table. And that's kind of what we did last time. So we're going to look at, um, and again, we're going to probably copy some of our code from last time because why reinvent the wheel? So we're looking at identifying when there is a new voucher number that indicates there's a new vendor. And this we're going to use regular expression here to figure out uh, where those voucher numbers are. And it's basically gonna be where the line starts with three digits. And again, like I said, I'll cheat a little bit and we'll go back and see what we figured out last time. And that's exactly what we did last time. So that new vendor reg X is when there are three digits. So that means it's the start of a line, that means a digit, and then that means exactly three, followed by a space. So I deliberately put a space in there, followed by one or more, I guess that's zero or more, um, capital letters A through Z. And if you take a look at the file, you can see they all start with a capital letter. That may be 
not true if this is a longer file. You never know. It could be a number or it could be a lowercase. But in this case, I think it's a, a pretty safe assumption that's going to be correct. So let's go ahead and grab this code here. And we're going to paste that here. So new bend. And nope, got to import regular expressions. Import RE. Good to go there. And I think I already have text defined, so this should actually work out. And excellent, look. So now I've got my vendor number and the name of the vendor. Again, um, next we are going to split it. So this code should definitely still work. And what this is doing is for line in text dot split, it's going to give me the new vendor where it matches. And hopefully that's what I got last time. Yeah, so that's perfect. So next what we want to do is create a way to parse the invoice line. And so what this does here is this is creating a regex for the, in, the entire invoice line. Um, and what this says here, let's just interpret it together real quick. This is finding, and the, so the parentheses create these subgroups. So that way it gives us the output of um, what it finds within those parentheses as a group that we can grab. And so this means digit, this means exactly six. So it's looking for six digits, followed by a space, followed by another six digits. And if we look at the code, oh, interesting. Uh, okay, yep, that's perfect. So it's it, what we're doing is we're actually ignoring invoice number. The reason why is because invoice number isn't always there. So we're gonna say, you know what, for our purposes, maybe we don't care about voucher and invoice number, we just want the consistent lines here. So we're gonna grab invoice date, due date, invoice amount. This, I think the P looks like it always exists except for one row, so we'll have to see if we can handle that somehow. And then followed by the net amount and then reference description. So let's see what we're able to do here. That's our code for the invoice line. And let's see what we're doing here. We're creating a, a list called line items. Oops, I don't wanna generate anything yet. So our list of line items for line in the text.split, we are checking to see if it's a new vendor. And if, uh, and then we're saying, okay, now if it's a line, we're gonna grab this stuff and then we're gonna append um, the line items. But what we haven't done is we haven't defined this inv variable. So we're gonna have to go back up and first from collections, import name tuple. Let's do that up here. I'll do it right here. And then I'm going to do one more where we are defining the inv or invoice line or the inv. And what that does is this gives us access to a named tuple where when we feed in the information into it, it'll automatically name the items in that tuple. So it's kind of a nice way to easily access it. So hopefully this will work. And let's just check line items. And now we've got perfect. We have the vendor number, the vendor name, invoice date, due date, invoice amount, net amount, overnight, document delivery. Let's just check and make sure it picked up the one without the P, because we'll have to fix that later. So that would be uh, 400 sprint local and long distance. And 400 sprint local and long distance. Perfect. So we actually covered that already, so that's great. So we basically have all we need to create a table now. So let's go ahead and create the table. And again, I'm copying the code from before, because why not? And oh, I didn't, uh, didn't import pandas. That would be helpful if I imported pandas. Import panda as pd. Now that we have pandas in our environment, we can now create the data frame. And let's go ahead and take a look at this puppy. Perfect, look at this. We have that full table, all the line items. And if you want, we can just double check that our amounts are correct. We can grab the, uh, let's do the net amount. So we'll do df.sum net amount. And hopefully this will match. Oh, you know what? We didn't convert that to a number. That's just being pulled in as a string. So df net amount equals df net 
come out as type. And I'll spec this a float. And oh, it didn't like the commas. Yeah, of course, of course. So what I like to do here is create a function. So convert num num, and then what we're going to do is num equals. Let's get rid of the comma. And there's probably no negative numbers. That might only be the only one with a comma. So if there were negatives, we'd have to treat those as well. But here we're just replacing the comma with nothing, and then num equals float num return num. That should work. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to shift this down here. And instead of doing uh, the as type float, we're going to do map. So that maps the function to that field. Now we should be able to say df net amount of sum. And that should hopefully give us, let's see, 22, 476, 31. And 22, 46, 31. Woohoo! We did it. Go team. So that's exciting. So that's how we were able to read in a PDF without having to download it and then use a little bit of regular expression and pull it in. Now, if you want to see something crazy, I don't know if it'll work, but in our next video, we're going to see if we can do all of this automatically using generative AI. We're going to use OpenAI's brand new model. GPT 4.0 with vision. We're going to pull in that one page as an image and we're going to see if we, if we give it an example of what we're looking for. And we're going to see if it can give us uh, this same table. So stick with us. Come check it out. It's going to be sweet.